Hey, welcome to Loose Change, still best served at room temperature. I'm Jim Evans, thanks for joining us, and you will be really glad you did because we have a really, really, really good show on hand. So stick around to find out what we're talking about. Greg, what's been going on as usual? I'm driving in the car recently. I hear another ad on the radio for a local seminar to show people how to flip houses and make some money. That's probably a good program, but I said this years ago that this is nothing new in this area. People around here have been doing this for years, decades, but through a different technique. Arson. <laughs> Not to promote that. What other uh, things are going on locally? Oh, police blotter. A woman reported her credit card was stolen while she was staying at the Wagon Wheel Motel. And I thought about this, and it's like, you know what? If you've got a credit card, you're not staying at the wagon wheels. <laughs> Major League Baseball is underway. That's always a great thing. Uh, a lot of teams still trying to find their way, get the right lineup, moving guys up and down from the minors. But everyone's getting there. Even Stormy Daniels is shuffling her 40-man roster. So it's still going on. A lot of roster shuffling at the White House, huh? A lot of openings they have to, to fill. And immediate need right now, they have four a Secretary of Foreign Affairs, as well as a Secretary of Extramarital Affairs. <laughs> I'm working on that. Uh, you know what, Greg, can I see that cue card? Yeah. yeah that's what I thought, you know. Budget cuts. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it back a little further. I'll, I'll hang on to this one. Uh, Villanova wins the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship for what, the second time in three years? There's all this extra excitement and energy around the Wildcats program. And now they have a dating site exclusively for Villanova basketball fans. Although watch out if you're a freshman, could be a one and done. <laughs> I don't know. You know. It's probably a lot of fun. But for me, for me, I don't think I want to put all my chips on a rebound relationship. <laughs> A lot of people are hoping the Cleveland Browns rebound, and they've been working on that, that's for sure. What an offseason it's been under new general manager John Dorsey. He has been wheeling and dealing, letting guys go, signing free agents, swapping players with other teams. And now the rumor is they even have a deal in the works with the Newcastle School of Trades. <laughs> Step on that and hey, this is true. Uh, you may have heard this. If not, uh, New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees says after football, he's going to consider getting into politics. That might work. And I thought, how refreshing will it finally be to have a politician who is actually a saint? <laughs> hey, stick around. Jeff Good joins us next right here on Loose Change. I would if I were. Zoom Wi-Fi is the area's fastest and most reliable internet experience. Whether you use the internet for email, streaming video, or gaming, Zoom allows you to choose the service plan that's right for you. And Zoom Wi-Fi makes it easy for everyone in your home to safely and securely surf the web at the same time. You can stream video from anywhere in your home or catch up on your emails from the couch. Call today and we'll help you find the Zoom level that's just right for you. The future is faster with Zoom. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans, and I have the great pleasure to be joined by a uh, great old friend and uh, partner in solving crimes. He's also the Director of Education at Western Reserve Public Media, PBS 4549, the one, the only, Jeff Good. Well, thank you, Jim. Thanks it's a, it's for a being here. pleasure to be here. I'm glad you agreed to do this before the local war off. Exactly, exactly, so, exactly. Um, what we like to do, uh, if you don't already know, and you probably don't, is to have our victims or, or our guests uh, off the top Give us a little background rundown, uh, where you're from, where you went to school, how your career okay. path took shape, for those who don't know. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm a local guy. I grew up in uh, North Lima, Ohio, went to South Range Schools. Um, always wanted to get into broadcasting. I, I don't know why I chose that. And you did. And I did. Um, attended Youngstown State. Um, found a way, I, I think they called me a, what would be a, like a legacy or whatever, but I found a way to fit four years of college into seven. Um, which was a perfect These thing for me. Things happen. Exactly. Um, left, uh, left Junkstown State, graduated. I uh, got a job in a satellite business for a while, and I worked in local TV for a while, uh, local radio where I met you yep. uh, back in the day, and um, just really enjoyed a lot of the educational aspects of, of uh, broadcasting. And so I 
Um, started, I got a job at Youngstown State right. working in the media center and I worked a lot with uh, telecom students and I really enjoyed that educational side. Um, left there and went to work for Trumbull County Educational Service Center and developed a distance learning network and I worked a lot with teachers on, on kind of developing their skills and how to be a kind of a TV teacher for lack of mm -hmm. anything. Um, Headhunter called me from Michigan uh, around the year 2000 okay. and I left there and went up to Michigan for five years and I um, Holly, Michigan. Holly, Michigan. That's yes. Right. Um, and uh, but had a plan. You know, I told told my family because we're all from Northeast Ohio. We're all from Youngstown. That we'd be back in five years. And so, luck as it, you know, I'm always a big advocate of things happen for reasons. And unfortunately, well, my contract ran out in Michigan and had an opportunity to come back. Um, my wife uh, had by then gotten a college degree and was in the uh, human resources, so she was very well sought after. Um, and I came back to the area um, with the kids, um, had a part-time kind of deal with Youngstown State, and a, and a job that went up in the paper, and I remember my wife looked at it and said, is this something that you'd be interested in? It's at the public television station, and Jim, I'll be honest with you, I, I really didn't, I mean, I applied for it, I really didn't know what it all entailed, um, interviewed really well, um, and I ended up getting the job, and you know, the worry you have sometimes is you got to be careful what you ask for because I remember that first meeting going, uh, okay, what do I do? Because yeah, um, I didn't know whether I was going to be on TV. I didn't know. Um, and what, what I found was it's a lot of all the kind of the coagulation of everything I've done over the years working with teachers and integrating technology and um, really kind of ended up at, at uh, Western Reserve PBS. And, and I work um, not so much on the broadcast side, but more on the educational service right. side. And I... Uh, work a lot with teachers and basically doing what I've been doing, which yeah. is is working with them on how do I improve my technology skills, improve student learning in the classroom, and all those those good things. Yeah, it, for those who don't know, I mean, you probably maybe just touched on it, but explain what distance learning is for yeah. for those who are um, familiar. When when I worked at Youngstown, when I worked at Trumbull County, when I worked in Michigan, you know, distance learning was just kind of in its infancy. A lot of times yeah, it was, right, right. you know, teachers would be in front of a camera, and it might be a like a closed circuit system. It might be that a teacher might be in one room and then be delivering instruction to another room. And then it's just kind of progressed. Technology has allowed that to happen. And, and it's basically just teachers um, teaching from a distance. Okay. You know, so it might be, there might be students in their classroom, but then there might be students all over the country. Now with the internet, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, distance learning type, of, and it's taken on kind of a new role um, you see less and less of the broadcast teachers standing in front of the camera. You've got more teachers now that are doing classes online. So distance learning now has kind of, it's not the old same old distance learning I was okay. used to. It's, it's more of, I can take a class online, and oftentimes that's what okay. now has become the new distance learning. Because you might have a moment where you interact with a teacher, but most of the time now in the new distance learning world, it's, it's taking an online class and collaborating with your, with your fellow uh, students in your class. So, you know, uh, PBS 4549, Northeast Ohio, what's the coverage area? Um, and it's funny, I was, I was looking at this today, and, and there's still a lot of people that reference us as PBS 4549. Okay. It has been 10 years. 2008, we changed our name to Western Reserve PBS. Right. And we did that for a couple reasons. And, and it was funny because, you know, back in the day when you had over-the-air broadcast, you had Channel 45, you had Channel 49. Well, now, right, yeah. with cable coverage... What's happening was I would go and talk to folks, and I would say, I'm from PBS 4549. Oh, Channel 45, you're with ESPN. Ah, okay. So we had to change with the times. Mm. And so the whole concept was that area that we're in, if you remember Ohio history, is the old Connecticut Western Reserve. And so we took this whole concept of Western Reserve PBS as our name 10 years ago. Um, and, it, what it, and, and actually, it was Western Reserve Public Media, which is more of an umbrella of our broadcast side, which is Western Reserve PBS, our educational service side. Um, our coverage area, we're, not a lot of people know this, we're, we actually operate two stations. Uh, we have a, a station, one of our transmitters is in Salem and it serves the Youngstown oh, that's right. market. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's what the DMA 109 or whatever. Our other station, WEAO, is located, that transmitter is in Copley and that serves the Akron Cleveland DMA. So we're serving the 19th and the 109 DMA, and we are the largest PBS television station in Ohio. We have 5.1 million viewers, um, which is, you know, everyone says, oh, it's got to be Cleveland, got to be Columbus. They're, they're at a little, little over 3.9 million viewers. Um, like, like we've talked about, you know, that doesn't mean 
that 5.1 million viewers are always watching our station. Right, it's right. the potential that 5.1 right. million viewers can watch us at any given time. So that's our coverage area. Just a few, uh, few shy of our coverage area and our viewers, right, Greg? So, <laughs> um, talk about, if it applies at all, what your experience early on in your career in the media uh, has played and what you're, what you're doing now. How, how the, yeah. does that set the table for you? You know, it's funny. When, when I went, I grew up in an education family. And so when I decided to go to Youngstown State, I was going to go into telecommunications. And I remember my dad saying to me, and my dad been in, was in education Jay forever. Paul. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, you know, Jeff, I just don't know if this video stuff will ever catch on in education. And I laugh now because, you know, he had an opportunity to see that it really, really has mm -hmm. caught on in education. And, you know, and I think that background has, has helped me a lot. You know, it's presenting yourself. It's, it's being able to, you know, a lot of my job, Jim, is standing in front of a group of people, whether that group of people is a, is a camera or whether that group of people is in front of me. You still got to be comfortable doing that, you know, and being comfortable talking to teachers. Teachers are a tough crowd. I, I love them. I've been doing this for almost 30 years of working with teachers. But, but you know, they, I'll try to say this nicely, they smell blood in the water. If, if you don't know what you're talking about, well, so you better be very confident when you work with a bunch of teachers. And, and we've been very successful. So, you know, that background and, and being able to communicate and, and work with folks and um, how to tell a story sometimes. You know, when I, when I put together training for teachers, Oftentimes, that's what I have to kind of think about is who's my audience and what, and what do they want to get out of this? It's almost, I always feel sometimes I'm in a perpetual infomercial when I'm working with teachers because yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, you work with Charlotte, so yep, your you sister's go. a teacher, <laughs> a long-time teacher. Still working, too. Um, yes. You mentioned uh, you know, training teachers. What, what are you training them? How are you training them? Um, we, basically, we get money from the Ohio Department of Education to provide support for teachers in about an 8, 10-county area um, to help them. Uh, integrate technology. So for instance, when I started at, at the station 12 years ago, we dealt a lot with uh, interactive whiteboards, smart boards, okay. um, that, that type of technology. And, and it has evolved. I mean, now we're more into, um, I want to say software and computer applications. We do a lot of stuff with Google. Um, oftentimes, you know, 10 years ago when we started working with Google, everyone thought, well, Google's just a search. I, I use Google to search for, you know, or I use it to find a place. Well, right. Google is, is even more than that. And Google really stepped it up in the educational market about eight, nine years ago and provides a lot of uh, free resources. And I'm talking resources like word processing resources, you know, uh, spreadsheet resources, all in, and they're all cloud-based. So a lot of our teachers have to learn how, how I'm going to integrate this in my classroom. And we work a lot with, and then they have to worry about their students because their students now are walking into colleges or places of work mm -hmm. that need to know, how do I deal with technology? How do I integrate technology? Because that, that employer doesn't want to have to teach them that. So that's, that's like our yeah. biggest, I mean, we work a lot with the whole concept of um, other technology. So I may get a school that calls and they'll want to do something on iPads or how do I integrate? Um, but predominantly right now, we're just at a point of, of improving education, um, getting teachers comfortable using and integrating technology, and then finding a way to integrate that with their students. You know, teachers are funny because I can remember working for Trumbull County and saying, though, it's going to come a day that the students are going to be teaching the class, not just the teachers, and that day has come. Yeah. You know, the very successful teachers are the ones that are willing to say, hey, you know what, I don't need to know everything because mm -hmm. I never will, and you know, my students use this every day. So that's where I see... A, a real boom in that, and what we've helped them get teacher-wise get over that hurdle. To say, hey, you know what? Let's let the students handle it. How receptive have the school systems been? I, I would think pretty strong. You know, overall, I mean, um, any more to be fiscally responsible. I think to your community, you know, the days have passed where a, uh, a school district will get, you know, money to to invest in a computer lab, and the computer lab sits empty. Our community is pretty smart, you know, and so they're, they're first to jump on that community or that school and say, hey, how come that lab's not getting used? You know, meanwhile, the, with technology that students, you know, in some school districts, the technology the kids have at home better than the ones that the technology yeah, they have hey, in school yeah. and vice versa. It depends on where you are. So they overall, school districts have been very responsive, very receptive to our help. You know, and oftentimes what we'll do is we'll go in and train teachers in a school district, but then a lead teacher will then take over from that point and be kind of that tech connection. Um, and that's really what we want. You know, I, I don't want to be um, the sole source of, 
you know, because the, the teachers are the ones that know what's happening in their school. The teachers know what their other teachers know and how comfortable they are moving along. So that's really kind of been our approach is to, you know, get them, if, if a district calls, they might be at different levels. You know, they might be Google Advanced users and they need a, they have a pocket of teachers that want to learn more about that. And, and we love going in and talking to teachers and working with them and developing a professional development program. Or it might be brand new. It might be a brand new program that they're, they're integrating. We're, we're really beginning to look now of how we can improve, you know, those people that become that, that connection with us. You know, a lot of schools will use the term instructional coach, and we're really working at building a, a better curriculum for those instructional coaches to provide support for them. Because when they're in the district, they're sometimes they're on their own, you know. And so they're, they might be reconfiguring a computer one day, and the next day, teaching a group of teachers how to, how to do a spreadsheet or how mm -hmm. to do a website. Um, so they're always in need of support. See, look how much he's taught us here in just a few moments. You can hang around, right? Yes. We'll be back with more with Jeff Good right here on Loose Change. Stick around. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans along with Jeff Good from Western Reserve PBS. Jeff, you're talking about, you know, teachers and, and how you work with them. When you're putting your lesson plan together, so to speak, do you put yourself in, in, the, in the shoes of the teacher and in, in how you might, uh, you know, project or uh, promote what you're doing? That's a great question. Um, we were just talking about that in, in my team meeting today, and my team is myself and, and, a, and another person, but... <laughs> But it's still a team. Hey, right? a team. Yeah, yeah. team used to be just me. But yeah, um, but yeah we do talk about that because oftentimes that's where um, folks kind of, I don't want to say drop the ball, but they, they really need to think about where, you know, we often do, um, before I do any sort of training, whether it's at our location or at a school district, I'll reach out to the, the folks that are signed up and I'll ask them a series of questions. You know, how comfortable do you feel? Um, and then I kind of tailor myself around that. Um, so if I, if I realize that they're, really uncomfortable. Then what I also try to do is, depending upon where I go, um, humor has been very helpful for me. I mean, Can't on the be, presentation yeah. side. And knowing the area, you know. Funny guy. So, uh, you know, so for instance, if I'm going to do a training at United Local, you know, I can talk to them about being a South Range guy and having a son that played football and having a daughter that was on the flag line. And I could talk about those things. And um, when I said earlier that the teachers are an interesting lot, You've got to prove yourself to them, not only on what you know, but that you've done this before, that you've okay. met with them before, you know, and I'm all, you know, so that really helps, you know, so do I think about the teach? Absolutely. You know, you kind of have to do that. You know, anyone that does training, whether it's educational training or, you know, my wife that does human resources training, you know, you always kind of have to think about your audience. That's what you do yep. when you deal with, with your audience that you deal with, whether it's, you know, wherever that might be. What, you know, what do they want to hear? And, and getting to know them is an important part of that. How, you mentioned the internet, of course, is obviously a big part. Uh, has social media kind of crept into what you're doing? Uh, it it, it really has. Um, you know, Facebook now has become, you know, my, my kids don't go on social media much anymore. And I say my kids, my kids are in their 20s um, because they claim that's the old people's place to hang out. Dan and Megan, come on. Yep. Um, but... What we found is social media now is, is the new way to get your message out, yeah. you know, between email and social media. You know, when I started at the station, um, we were sending out 18,000 printed newsletters once a month for nine months. And that was a pretty expensive proposition, not with just mailing and all, all the printing. And over the years, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, things happen for reasons. We, we got a lot of budget cuts over the years. And that was like one of the first things I had to cut. Well, what the beauty of it now is, Jim, that, you know, I, I do a print newsletter, one pager, once every quarter, and the rest of the time I do automated emails. There you are. We yeah. post stuff on social media like Facebook and Twitter, um, and our response is different, you know, because the old days when you would, it's like, it's just like TV is to some extent. 
I'd send out a newsletter and I'd never know if anybody got it. Yeah. You know, the beauty now of the positives and negatives of the internet is now you can conduct a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. Media Um, response. Yes, exactly. And Mm -hmm. so now it's a two-way street. You know, so, you know, the problems you see with social media a lot of times are the fact that that people try to take the way they used to do things in the one-way world and move them into the two-way world and it, and it falls apart, you know, because, it, you know, it's like a website. I'd always tell people, you know, I, I don't like websites when I go on them and I know they haven't been updated in two years, you know, because it's like, well, you've got a website, you know, you've got to keep up. And that's what we try to do, you know, with our website, with our web presence, with our social media presence. But we haven't forgotten about print. You know, we still deal with a lot of teachers that want to have yeah, a piece of paper in their hand. hand. And, and it's um, my assistant that I work with. I, you know, I, was gonna, I got her a, a book the other day uh, about being an effective coach um, or media literacy. And I said, you know, I can get you the Kindle version. She said, I, I don't like the Kindle version. She said, I, I want to mark it up. Yeah. I want to be able to hold it. And she's, you know... Cool. 15 years younger than me. So, I mean, that thought process is still there. You've got those tactile folks that still want to have that, you know. So, yeah, it really has. Social media is just, it's just part of our toolkit now. So she's 22. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you for that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is that uh, one way to enhance what you're doing along with maybe some other ideas that, that this will move forward and get better? Um, you mean using social media? Yeah. You know what's interesting, about, and, I, and I should have included it when I was talking here. The other difference, and you had made it, asked me earlier about my background and how it has helped me. You know, now social media has all this, li- this live capability. Mm-hmm. You know, we do a lot of stuff now where, you know, and we're trying to integrate this on the TV side where we may have a TV broadcast. And let's say it's a, like, let's say we're getting ready to do live pledge. Um, what we're going to thinking about doing in the social media environment is let's do a lot of um, Facebook Live or YouTube Live events um, that, that lead up to the broadcast okay. event. Um, and we've talked about that. We've done, um, on the other side of that, um, when was it? It was end of, end of February. We had a, a national uh, digital learning day. And, you know, basically it was everyone, school districts all across the country talking about projects they were working on. Well, Collectively, as a group across the state of Ohio, we used YouTube Live, and we did 20-minute presentations that were, you know, facilitated. But it's back to what you asked me about, you know, my experience in the past, how that helped me. It was like, well, you know, everyone else did their their standard stuff. Well, we had a green screen. We had a graphic. We yeah. had, you know, and that was that media side where, um, but it was it was fully interactive. I mean, not only was I there, but I was seeing the people, you know, I was talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, which is that two-way side of things. So it, you know, it it has enhanced what we do. And like I said the live component, I think is is still relatively brand new. I think people are, you know, we see too often what if just because you have a phone in your hand and you shoot video doesn't make you a, a professional. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so that's kind of what we're finding now is what separates. It's funny we did a, a media. Um, you be the producer, which was kind of a media. Um, online resource for teachers. And I want to say we did that 15 years ago. Well, it's funny now, I've dug all that old stuff up that talked about headroom and making sure, you know, that you have continuity and all of these different writing styles. And I I mean, it's 15 years old, but it's coming it's back applies. to being important with these folks that are now in this um, social platform, social yep, media world. Absolutely. Uh, you guys have a great facility, uh, West Reserve PBS, and I, I always hear and read about public media facing challenges and maybe being in troubles. Is is, is that the case? Is that a concern it, at this point? We have. I, I want to say one of our one of our many positives. I mean, we weathered. I mean, in two thousand eight, we weathered a, a major, yeah. you know, nationally a major economic crisis right. that occurred in in the country, and the response to that was we were one of the few PBS stations that maintain uh, level support. You know, we get 71% of our support comes from private. You know, That's fantastic. Um, and I see you pledging up once in a while. Yep, uh, and, and, but you know, and what's funny about it is when I started, we were pledging almost every month. Now we pledge about four times a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're cognizant of our viewers. Um, but 71% comes from, you know, I always say like viewers like you, corporate underwriting. Uh, we do have some revenue that we get from tower. You know, we do tower rental mm-hmm. on our towers. But, you know, that's, that's what really, so when we weather those times, you know, 11% comes from um, the state of Ohio, 
I'm sorry, 11% comes from federal government, and we get about 18% from, from the state of Ohio, and a, a large portion of that comes into educational services. Mm -hmm. So we've weathered that storm, you know, with 11% federal funding, which, it, like we talk about, if that ever got totally cut, we'd be all right. Yeah. And the reason why is because our, the viewers that we have are um, different. You know what I mean? They're watching because they appreciate our mission, you know, which is this whole concept of, of education and supporting lifelong learning Great and program, all of that. Too. Exactly. And and that's always what, you know, we're yeah. real fortunate to have, you know, those types of viewers, um, and they support us. Well, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to be there, do a show, a uh, tremendously produced local show, Neotropolis. Uh, Trina was nice enough to have me host that show for a couple of years, and uh, that was a real positive experience for me. And I just truly still enjoy the programming, and I, I still can't get enough of watching, and I know it's, it's a national thing, but the Ken Burns Vietnam yes. uh, series, that is just fabulous. I think, I think one of the things that will, uh, that will be happening here very soon is we're really uh, hoping to increase our focus on local programming. Yeah. Um, we do a great music program now, and if you haven't watched it, it's uh, the Studio C Sessions that deals with local music, and it's in collaboration with the Summit. And yeah, that's um, good stuff. It, it's an amazing show. They've just done a great job with that, and it's a nice, and that's what you're going to see more of, I think, in this next year and year down the road at, at our place, which is more of these collaborative projects with folks that, you know, my boss uses the terminology of, you know, we want to, you know, we got a person that's uh, the peanut butter and we're chocolate. We want to get them together to make a Reese's cup. And that's what you're going to see more and more in this collaborative programming. I'm excited about it. Like Studio C is kind of like the poster child of, of how, where, where it was and where it is now. And it's just a great show. Yeah. And, there's, and there's more of those to, to come. Well, see, I told you we, we had a really, really, really good show. Actually, it was great. This was great. Unfortunately, we're out of time, Jeff. We have more to talk about, but I can't thank you enough for coming in. Say hey to Laura, Dan, and Megan. I will and, certainly uh, do that. We'll, uh, thank you, Jim. We'll see you again. Thank you. We'll be back to wrap it up here on Loose Change right after this. The history, the sports, the stories, the events. Armstrong Local Programming puts the focus on our community. Watch to learn about new events or discover the rich history of our area. You can find local programming on your local programming channel and on demand. Want even more? Subscribe to the Armstrong One Wire channel on YouTube. It's our town all the time with Armstrong Local Programming. One Wire, infinite possibilities. That's going to do it for our show. Thanks so much, as always, to the Telly Award winning Greg Roten. Thanks so much to Jeff Good. What a great guest he was. And thanks so, so much to my wonderful mother, Montine. We'll love you forever. We'll catch you next time right here on Loose Change. We will.